Good day, Junior Tickies. This is Mrs. De Mainon speaking, and today we are going to look at Chapter 5, Combination of Cash and Credit Transactions. More specifically, we're going to look at Analyzing of Transactions. Now, just to recap a bit or refresh our memories, if we think about transaction analysis, we have four steps. Step one is to identify the two accounts affected by the transaction. So you have to ask yourself, what type of transaction is this? A cash or a credit transaction? And then, what did we um, purchase or pay for? So in other words, it, did we receive money from debtors? That was it rent income? Or did we pay for stationery, etc., etc.? Then step two is to classify the accounts according to the equation as an asset, an owner's equity, or a liability. And therefore, you need to know what account falls under this each group um, off by heart. Step three, follow the flow of the money or the business. Um, so is it increasing or decreasing? And then step four, apply the double entry rule and decide which account is debited and which account is credited. And then, lastly, you fill in the table. So, what we need to know as well is to refresh our memories in terms of each journal. What is the source document? What is the keywords for each doc, um, journal? And what is the posting rule? So, in your um, theory booklet, you will see this table. So, CRJ, our source documents is cash register roll, duplicate receipts or bank statements, and we'd work with cash sales or um, cash receipts, bank statements, posting to, capital contribution, rent income, all of those. The general rule is to debit bank and credit the contra accounts with the exception of the stock account and cost of sales. We record cost of sales in the CRJ because we want to know what the profit is in compared to the sales of the day. So we have to say cost of sales, what did we sell, the goods, so we have to record the uh, goods there, so minusing trading stock. For the CPJ, our source documents is EFTs or bank statements, e-wallets, cash payments, what did we pay, drawings, and the general rule is that we will credit bank and debit the contra accounts um, to pay or debit the account accounts for the debit entry. Then the next two journals is our debtors journal and debtors allowance journal. The debtors journal, our source document, is a duplicate invoice, and our source document for debtors allowance journal is a credit note. Then our keywords, when it's um, debtors journal, is we sell on credit. There's duplicate invoices issues. We post to the debtors journal, services rendered on credit, sell goods on credit, all of those. For our debtors allowance journal, it is the unsatisfactory goods that was returned by a customer. So, or a customer was overcharged and an allowance was given. So, if we look at the posting rule for debtors allowances, we will, oh, excuse me, debtors journal, we will debit debtors control with sales and credit sales with debtors control. And if we have a sale, there's always a second part recording the stock sold. So debiting cost of sales, crediting trading inventory. The debtors allowance journal is basically a reversal of the debtors journal. So if we look at the um, transaction first part is to reverse the sales transaction. So we're going to create a debtors control with debtors allowances and we're going to debit um, debtors allowances with debtors control. We do not involve the sales account here directly because we need to know the, uh, which returns and how much returns are made. It's in, an item of importance and the concept of materiality applies here. So then the reversal of the goods returned. So if goods are returned, we have to increase trading stock and decrease our expense because we don't, we won't have an expense to restock the stock because we have it back. So debiting um, trading stock, crediting cost of sales. And then the last two journals, so creditors journal and creditors allowance journal. Yet again, the source document for our creditors journal is a renumbered invoice. And for our allowance journal as a debit note, 
Keywords for the credit journal is to renumber invoices, issued in an original invoice, buying things on credit, received a tax invoice, services rendered on credit for us, etc., etc. And then the posting rule, we will credit creditors control and debit the contra accounts. And now for the allowance journal, it means that we, the business, returns goods. Um, it's a duplicate debit note. Um, we were overcharged by the supplier, therefore we uh, have an allowance. So the rule there is to reverse the creditors journal posting and therefore crediting, or debiting creditors control with allowances and crediting our contra accounts. So this is very important. You have to know all of these rules and things or the, this, uh, these tables off by heart in order to apply it to the activity that we are going to do. Now in the usual activity for transaction analysis, they normally give us a transaction per transaction and we have to just fill out a table similar to the one that you see here. The other way is to ask it in this way. So give you the answer basically and leave out certain information. And then you're going to have to use the information printed as clues as to fill in what is missing. So if let's go. Activity one. You're provided with information relating to JT Traders, a business owned by Jeffrey Teboka for the month ending in April. Complete the table below. And assume that bank is favorable at all times. Now, if bank is favorable at all times, it means that bank is a current asset. So if we look at the first line, the clues they give us is the journal it comes from is a CRJ. The account credited is debtors control and assets minus a thousand and fifty Rand. And then we have to fill out. So the first thing I can fill out is I should know by now that CRJ links to three source document, <clears throat> cash register roll, bank statement, or duplicate receipt. Now, because this is debtor's control, it can't be cash register roll or CRR because that's reserved for sales. So in this case, it's a debtor that we received money from. So it's most likely that the debtor um, if or transferred the money into account or came into the business and we issued him a receipt. So technically, we can have two correct answers here. But the more correct answer would be duplicate receipt. But they will also accept bank statement as an answer for the source document here. Journal is given, CRJ. So CRJ, the one account that must always be there is bank. So in this case, bank is the debited account then. And <clears throat> therefore, the current asset increasing. I have to now classify um, debtors control as well and make sure I know what the flow of the money is here. So why do I know that bank is plusing? Because it's CRJ, I received cash. And therefore, debtors control is an asset classification. Flow of money is a minus because their debt is decreasing. So now, when I fill out the effect they want to know the flow of the money so the 1050 there will refer to the minus of the current asset for debtors control so what flow must i still um, record this plus for bank so i'll increase assets for 1050 rand and that refers to the bank transaction now the second line here the clue is given as discount allowed. So it links to the line above. The debtor paid and we gave him discount. Discount allowed. So the discount allowed links to the debtor's account. So it's not too important to fill out the source document and the subject book because it's the same transaction. It will just be a duplicate. So the credited account must now also be debtor's control. So then Debtors, or so discount allowance links always to debtors control. Then we have to classify both accounts. Discount allowed is an expense to the business that is going to increase. But they don't want to know what is the effect on the expense. They want to know for owner's equity. So 
increasing in expense will decrease my profit, therefore decreasing owner's equity. And debt is controlled, their debt is decreasing again. So the effect here of 250 refers to the asset minusing. So I still need to record this expense owner's equity decreasing. So I'll say minus 250 to indicate the decrease for discount allowed. Then transaction number two, the clues is original invoice, stationary, and then we have an increase of 290 under the liabilities column. So already you should know that original invoice refers to a credit purchase transaction, which is recorded in the creditor's journal. And now what did we purchase? Stationary. So that's the one account. The other account is the method. So we bought on credit. So the account must be creditors control. And then we classify each one. Stationary is an expense that's going to increase because I bought more, but that is going to minus my profit. And I owe more debt. It's plusing and that is current liability increasing. So the 290 here refers to the increase in debt that I owe. And then what do I still need to record on the effect that I have to record the stationery that I purchased that is minusing my profits. Then transaction number three, the clues, there's two parts to this transaction. The clues is first of all, first line, CRR, bank and 5,000 Rand. Now guys and girls, the moment you see CRR, which refers to cash register role, and you see bank, you must know that this links to the cash receipt journal. And because it's the cash receipt journal bank, and bank is favorable, current asset plusing for bank. And then why, what is the method, why do we receive the money? Now the cash register role should have indicated that to you, that it's a sales transaction. So sales is owner's equity income um, and the money will flow into the business. So the 5,000 inflow here under owner's equity refers to the sales um, account. And then what must I still record? I must still record the inflow for the assets of 5,000 Rand. Then on the last line, we have a clue of trading stock, 2,500 Rand. In other words, this was the transact part of the transaction i record the cost of the goods sold so goods sold is trading stock cost for the goods is cost of sales so that's your expense that will minus owner's equity trading stock will minus because i don't have the stock anymore so the two and a half thousand refers to the stock and then i must still record the two and a half thousand rand for the cost of sales transaction Guys, I know that this is a bit difficult and it's a backward, but you can still just follow your steps and you need to know your basic theory very, very well. We then continue and look at transaction number four. Now, if we look at transaction number four, it gives us the subsidiary book as CRJ and it gives us interest on fixed deposit. Now, when we have interest in fixed deposit, you must realize that you will only see that on your bank statement at the end of a month. So therefore your account debited must be bank and that is your current asset increasing and interest on fixed deposit is an income and that will also increase our owner's equity. So if we, the 1,100 Rand is then linked to the interest on fixed deposit, so I must just add the effect for the asset which is 1,100 Rand for the asset increasing for bank. Transaction number five gives us the clues of debtors journal and sales in the first line and the second line cost of sales. Um, so this is a credit sale transaction. So the source document is a duplicate invoice. We fill out the first line we sold to debtors, so debtors control and that's our asset increasing. Sales as the income increasing. So the effect of 14,400 increasing under equity links to the sales income. So I need to just write down the effect for the asset, 14,400. I don't need to fill in the source document or the subsidiary book again because this is same, still the same transaction. So what we sold, so the method of sale was a credit sale. What did we sell? 
um, the cost of sales or cost of goods sold. So we have to have, um, which is an expense minusing owner's equity. The account linking to that is always trading stock, increasing, um, excuse me, that's a mistake. Um, trading stock minusing um, because that will de we sold the stock. So the minus 7,200 Rand will um, link to the expense minusing and then minus 7,200 Rand will mean link to current asset decreasing selling the stock. Then the next transaction, if we look at that, we have to make sure that um, debit note and trading stock is given to us and debit note is the source document for the creditors allowance journal so we have caj and linked to that is we're sending the stock back to our creditor so creditors control now creditors control is a current liability that will decrease because i'm sending stock back on owing them less money then the stock will minus as well because i'm sending it back so the minus 500 links to the stock and then I have to fill in minus 500 for liabilities. Transaction number seven, an EFT, creditors control and the liability is minusing. That must indicate a payment. So CPJ, creditors control is a current liability minusing. Bank is the current asset also decreasing because I'm paying money. So the 10,530 is first of all, um, minusing links to the liabilities so I need to just write in the 10,530 for the bank transaction then on the same day or same transaction the CPJ discount received so on this payment we received discount so creditors control must minus again and discount received is an income so the 170 rand increase under equity links to the um, discount received and I have to just enter the minus 170 Rand for the liability that minuses. Then the last transaction is DAJ and it gives us debiting trading stock and it gives us a minus 450 on the first line for asset and a minus 175 Rand which will link to the current asset as well. Now this debt is allowance journal means it's a reversal of a sales entry. So it's a reversal of a credit sale. So I'm going to have to debit or the first of all, the source document is a credit note. I'm going to debit debtors allowances, which is an expense increasing, therefore minusing owner's equity. And debtors control will minus because they don't owe me anymore. They send the stock back. So the minus 350 links to the data. So I must then still minus the 350 off equity for the allowance. And then second of all, we must record the trading stock that <clears throat> is sent back to us. So we will therefore debit our trading stock and credit cost of sales minusing. So our cost of sales is in oh, sorry is minusing is increasing the expense but minusing equity and trading stock must increase because they send it back to us so our stock is increasing so therefore this must be plus 175 that will link to the stock and then i have to minus 175 of equity that will link to the cost of sales and then finally, this is the end of this uh, journal or this activity. We've looked at the transaction analysis now in detail. In the next activity, which is activity two, the journals, we will um, look at posting all the combination journals from transactions. I hope this helps a lot. Have a good day.